What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the world according to Eric with the baddest bitch on the block, Eric Devante. And it is top a bitch. You better read. Top five entertainment stories that I feel like you need to hear for the week. And I feel like I did a pretty good job with the selection of stories this week, if I do say so myself. <laughs> so let me not hold y'all up. Let's discuss. Let's talk. Engage with me. Number one. So, number one. A South Carolina woman is arrested after shooting at her ex-boyfriend and his new boyfriend. Who shot you? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you heard that right. He is on the dark side. <laughs> She's mad about it. Um, okay, so this story is from Hollywood Unlocked. A South Carolina woman was arrested after she fired several rounds at her ex-boyfriend and his new boyfriend in a drive-by shooting. Oh, okay. This is Tupac. That's what quarantine is doing to us. Uh, according to Gossip on This, Renee LaVon Simon, who is 53, um, was arrested Sunday night after Spartanburg police officers responded to a call about a shooting on Lincoln Drive. Simon's ex-boyfriend reported to the police that she started shooting at him and his new boyfriend as they were coming home. He explained that Simon was his ex-girlfriend and she was most likely upset for him moving on from their former relationship. Um... Let me keep it a buck with you, sweetie pie. She's not only mad that you left her to be with somebody else, she's mad you left her to be with a man. <laughs> I don't know how open-minded you thought old girl was, but, I, I, and this is not an article, I'm only assuming, so this is just my interpretation of it. She's mad that you, you left her for more dick. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I mean, I can see it. A uh, 53-year-old black woman, you know, treated bad by society, probably been through a lot in her lifetime. Then her new man is leaving because he's just like, you know, you're just not, you know, I see you throw it back on me, and I'm wondering, well, how would it be if I threw it back on another man? So he left, and now pop, 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 goes my mind. You know what, I'm gonna just insert a biggie who shot you here. This seems more appropriate. Who shot you? Um... But yeah, I mean, there's really not too much commentary to be had on this story. I shouldn't even be laughing about this, but I find something comical. Um, there's really no follow-up information as to what happened with this woman. I, I guess she's still in jail, because you can't just be shooting at people because of sexual preference. That's, that's very 1990. So, yeah, I don't know, but um, some wild shit. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I wonder how the conversation went down though, like, did you give her fair notice? Like, did she pop up and see you two in the bed together? Well, it says that she was mad about the breakup, so I'm pretty sure he broke it down in a formal way. But, mm, damn. Oh well. Oh well, Simon. Good luck in prison. <laughs> Number two. I love R. Kelly, but around my daughters, I'm not comfortable. That's gonna draw a lot of attention as it already has. Well, it's <laughs> yeah, some sometimes when you speak on records, you you speaking like it's like it's just me and you having a conversation as friends, but it's just you know you just speaking and just being just being honest. And right. I mean, you know, I, I saw that a lot of people kind of misconstrued or didn't like really understand what it was that I was saying. But again, Tig, you you're a very smart man. What? Let me just ask you, what do you think I meant when I said that? What do I think? Be honest? You meant? What do you think Knowing I mean when I say that? No way I know you. You probably meant I, I love his music and what he brought to the table, but I'm a father of daughters, and yeah, nah, you're not going to be around my daughter. You're a smart man, bro. You did it. <laughs> Number two. So I don't know if you guys all saw the Ludacris versus Nelly battle that happened this past Saturday, but if you didn't, shame on you. You missed a really good moment, like for the culture. Uh, and so many fine men. Ludacris and Nelly. I don't want to get hot and bothered. It's not the topic of conversation here. Now, during um, the versus battle, Nelly was having a bit of technical difficulties, which left Luda with some extra airtime. And in that extra airtime, he decided to, you know, you know, showcase some new songs. One of which he did with Lil Wayne. And in that song, he made a reference to R. Kelly. Um, basically saying, I love R. Kelly, but around my daughters, I'm not comfortable. So, for some reason, you know, you emotional bitches, real Carl Thomas emotional bitches, have decided to get in your bag about it and feel offended. And, I mean, I was scrolling through the comments here and there, but I honestly didn't care because I knew it was a lot of reaching, and you bitches don't like to stretch before you reach, which is why your limbs hurt. It's a lot. Um, I'm going to place the clip so you guys can see it, 
but I personally don't feel like Ludacris said anything wrong. I mean, I'd be remiss to sit here and act like I do not, or I did not grow up listening to R. Kelly music in my black household. Not saying all black households in my, absolutely. It was a lot of R. Kelly. Um, does that mean I support the actions that he's displayed throughout the years? Absolutely not. Disgusting. You're killing me, man! But I think that for me to sit here and act like the music doesn't bang, I would be frontin', Pharrell voice. So Ludacris is basically saying that in the lyric. He's like, look, the music hits. However, you're not gonna be around my young daughter. It's, it's period. And a lot of you bitches can get on the bandwagon and try and be political activists if you want to and act like you were never listening to this man's music or like you don't have problematic faves. I'm not even gonna name drop artists. It's not the point here. Um, but for you to act like you don't have problematic faves who you cannot disassociate the art from would be a lie. Like, y'all not telling me nothing. So, get on Little Chris's back. It wasn't like he was like, oh, y'all going too hard on my man R. Kelly. Yo, fuck y'all, fuck Gail. Like, it, it's not giving that. He reprimanded R. Kelly, but he acknowledged that he liked his music. And it was a bar, and it rhymed. Why y'all trying to stop? Y'all are too sensitive. And sensitive to the point where creators are not able to create effectively. Like, can, when comedians cannot do certain jokes because it's... Uh, insensitive, that's a problem. And and there's levels to it. Some jokes really should not see the light of day and have bad taste. But when artists aren't able to, you know, add a bar to a line or, or reference an, another artist because you guys are gonna get butthurt about it, like, y'all need to bring that down. Y'all need to bring it down because I remember at a point, entertainment was just that. And it was real cutthroat and gutter. Like, 80s, 90s, early 2000s, like we were saying shit. Not all of it was good shit, but for the most part it was good shit. I mean, the world is dark and you gotta find your human in it, however you gonna find it. But this moment with Ludacris, y'all are reaching. So get off his back, period. Ludacris, you said nothing wrong in the song is about, I can't wait for it to be on iTunes so I can stream. And watch you bitches do the same, talking mess for nothing. I hate to see it. Number three. So, number three, it's looking like, dear God, it's looking like LA County is on track to open um, or reopen by the 4th of July. Um, according to the Hollywood Reporter, Los Angeles County officials have um, set a new target date for a safe reopening of all businesses and the economy. And it happens to be the busiest holiday of the summer, the 4th of July. And when they say reopening of businesses, this is what they mean, ladies and gentlemen, uh, allegedly. Um, reopening of all businesses such as retail, restaurants, malls, and other areas of local economy that have been hit the hardest by the coronavirus outbreak. Okay, and you know, I, I personally don't want to get too excited because I'm one of those bitches that's really going through it because I am a social butterfly and I have just been punched back into my cocoon and I don't like it. I feel real sheltered in here. Um, so I, I don't want to get my hopes up because you know, at some point we were supposed to get out early May, then they extended it to June, now we're talking the 4th of July, like, I don't think the government knows what they're doing, so I damn sure don't know what's going on. Um, so I'm not about to sit here and pull out my best, my best brunch fit to get disappointed, because at that point I'm gonna have to swing, I'm gonna have to be somebody ass. Corona, when I see her, I'm gonna square with my mask and be her ass. Like, I just, I can't no more, I can't believe that this is life. But then some of y'all are in the comments talking about some, well, I'm still not going outside. Well, bitch, good for you, okay? Because when you see a pack of rabbit idiot bitches run into the function, please know that I'm going to be front in line. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I am not too proud to beg at this point. Like, this is not humane. Humans are not meant to be locked down like this, you know? And I don't know what to believe specifically because I just the handling of the coronavirus outbreak has really been a lot. Um... Shit, it's like now when any when anybody dies, it's automatically coronavirus. Like bitches is not getting hit by cars. Um, girls is not having heart attacks. Like it's it's not giving flu, influenza. Like everything is COVID nineteen. And I just, I, no, I'm not hearing it. I'm really not hearing it. So at this point. I can't take being locked down for three more months. Like, I'm really ready to run the risk. Like, when Chris Brown said, run it, I'm ready to run it. The risk, it's mine. Like, I can't no more. So, y'all can hold y'all pride talking about, I'm gonna let some of y'all go out there and test it. Well, bitch, I'll let you know how it is. But I hope you missed the free point at the brunch where they're talking about, oh, no, it's after 10. You can't get in for free because you want to be letting people test it, you spiteful bitch. So, <laughs> I... 
I don't know. I really have my fingers crossed because I cannot no more. Like, I can't do it. Like, my room is cute and thank God, but like, I can't do another Zoom party. Like, the girls don't be giving up on Zoom. Ain't no skin contact. Ain't no bar. Like, bitches is drinking out the bottle. It's looking real AA. I hate to see it. Mm -mm. So, hopefully, 4th of July for LA County. Now, the rest of you sick bitches, I don't know what to tell y'all. New York, Jersey, um, shit, PG County, DC. I do not know what to tell y'all. Um, but. I'm really hoping, <laughs> I'm really hoping LA get it together, because I can't take this. A bitch is going to have to relocate to Nova Scotia, all right? I think the population may be giving it up over there, because what, what the fuck is in Nova Scotia? I don't know, but it's probably more lively than here. So, we'll see. July 4th, fingers crossed, ladies and gentlemen. Number four. And, um, yeah, they were just Caucasians. And so, I think that there's something to be said for... Just having, it just always feels icky to me when, pe when people feel like they can't show support without trying to replace or without trying to appropriate. Number four, as usual, Amanda Seals is getting some type of backlash for expressing herself. This time, it is about a clip that was posted, um, well, an episode of The Real where Amanda was talking about how white people should not be using darker skin emojis because... I mean, do I even have to say? Like, she says it in the video, and I will place it so you guys can see. And if you want the full clip, do the research. It's called Bitch You Better Read. I cannot spell it out enough. Um, but, you know, Amanda said what she said, and whether I agree or disagree is besides the point. However, I do agree. Um, but I think the bigger issue is that since Amanda Seals has gotten on the reel, a lot of you guys have made it your mission to uh, leave nasty comments or say that you know, ever since Amanda got on the show, it became too serious, and she's no good, replace her with somebody else. The show is called The Real, and I don't know if you guys think that's real comedy, um, I don't know if y'all think it's Degrassi, I don't know what y'all think it is, but my interpretation of The Real is real shit that is going on discussed by five different women on a spectrum of life. So when Amanda Seals gets on there and says shit that is really going on, in black culture, I don't understand why you guys are so, ah, uh, so, oh my goodness, flabbergasted, like, what, what is the intention of the show to y'all? I think Amanda Seals is necessary to be on that show because we, as black people, at least in my opinion, did not have a solid mouthpiece. Lonnie Love was fair representation, however, I don't feel like Lonnie Love properly articulated all the things that needed to be articulated. Like, Amanda went to school for this, she does this. And when she articulates it, the point sticks. You may not have liked how it came out of her mouth, however, the information came out correctly most times. Um, and then Tamara, whenever Tamara is uh, faced with issues of blackness or racism, she sits there looking stiff. Looking uncomfortable. And you know, that that's her prerogative. I can't... I can't get in her mind or speak for her. She feels how she feels. She's also biracial. She also has a white husband. Like, I feel like all of that may come into play, but either way, Tamara is not the, the quintessential mouthpiece that I feel like the black community needs for the real. Amanda Seals does it, and I'm forever grateful for it. Like, I think a lot of y'all are just mad because you want to live in this fictitious world that has been painted for centuries, and that's just not the case. So, the fact that this black woman is on this show, letting y'all know what's really going out there, letting y'all know what's happening in the real world on a show called The Real, I really think you guys need to take what she's saying, listen to it, try and process it, and maybe, maybe, it's a stretch, it's a stretch, apply it to life. Like, I just, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Because y'all be on deck when people like Tommy Loren spew an ignorance about... I mean, shit, everything she says is ignorant, but y'all love that. So what's the problem with Amanda Seals getting on here after she's worked her ass off, probably was in school and accumulated debt to learn about Africana studies or African-American studies. I'm not sure like specifically what it is, but I think it's African-American studies. Either way, this woman has put in the time to acquire the knowledge and now she's getting paid to share it and y'all are bashing her. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. And thank God that this is my platform because I can't hear it. Um... Fuck out of here. Amanda, keep doing your work. Keep doing the job, good sis. They brought you on for a reason. I am personally in love with you. So, that's it. Number five. So, number five. A party in the Hollywood Hills results in a man shooting himself in his testicles. Um, 
in his private area. And his dude! Who do? shot you? <laughs> Okay, so KTLA reports that police got a call about a complaint of a loud party at 1410 Miller Drive at about 11 p.m. When they arrived, they discovered over 100 people at a rental property. The officers also heard a single gunshot and called for backup units. They later found out that the single gunshot wound was self-inflicted by a man to his testicular area. Um, damn. His dick must be trash. And I'm talking like pre-shooting. Like, why would you do that? Your little Johnny? Billy boy? Why would you do that? <laughs> like, okay, so, I mean, I can't even sit here and um, bash these people for having a party in the Hollywood Hills. Like the party in um, Chicago, I wish I was there. I hope it was gutter. I really hope y'all got your time and, and money's worth. Um, and so, no, I don't feel any type of way about that. But how do you get lit enough where you have, first of all, why are you bringing a gun to the function? Why can't y'all go to any functions without shooting shit up? Like, have y'all not learned from parties of the past? Like, y'all gotta chill with, ah. Uh, the right to bear arms is really killing us all, literally. Um, why would you shoot yourself in your dick? For what? How lit were you at this party? It was probably some really wild white drug. Like, not white as a white person, like white drug. Like, I don't know, like cocaine. Um, I don't know if it was ecstasy. I, do, I don't know what will cause, because I've never once thought, hey, let me shoot my, my mans. Um, hey, to each his own. I just like, what is going on? Marvin Gaye boys, y'all bitches. I like the party. A party ain't a party till it's ran all through, but that does not categorize a party. Mm -mm, not at all. Um, to this man, there's no information as to what happened. It doesn't say if the, you know, if the penis had to be detached, if he underwent surgery. I don't know. Wow. And to think you go to a party in the Hollywood Hills to get laid. Well, what you gonna do now, sweetie? What you gonna do? Ain't no girl touching that. You bleed him profusely. If you ain't shoot it off, who are you, Vincent Van Gogh for dick? Look, I... I've given all I got for this bitch, you better read. So ladies and gentlemen, that was all for bitch, you better read. And please like, share, subscribe, comment, tell a friend, wash your hands. If you go to a party in the Hollywood Hills, hey, don't bring a gun. And if you do, don't shoot your dick. Um, and I will see y'all next week. Peace.